Hey, and welcome to another Ice Age 2 review. Um, this is very special because it's the first review from the IC82 Mailroom series. <laughs> yeah, that's right folks. This loco has been sent in to me by one of uh, you lot, one of my fans, one of my viewers, one of my subscribers. Uh, this has been sent in by a lad called Connor. And I want to thank Connor an awful lot for sending in this locomotive because I've thought about getting one of these for a long time, but never got around to doing it. Now, it's the middle of the night, everyone's asleep, it's really late, and I thought, why not? I'll get to it, I'll get it done, because I just can't wait any longer. This is a Q1, Q for Quebec 1, by Hornby. It says it's super detailed, but we know what that means. Mm, we'll have to see. Uh, there we go, in British Rail livery, just plain black. It's a class Q1 locomotive, and this is 33017. Now, that's quite interesting because they only made 40, and only number one has been preserved. Number one is currently at the National Railway Museum in, New Railway Museum in York. Uh, the rest have gone, sadly. Now, it's a bit of a Marmite locomotive, isn't it? People tend to either love or hate it. <laughs> but I really don't have um, an opinion on it just yet. I know it does look quite strange, but there's a reason for that. It's, I mean, just look at those wheels. What do those wheels tell you? It's a Bulliard. It's uh, Oliver Bulliard, the guy from the Southern region, the Southern Railway. And it's an austerity locomotive. Austerity means it's a World War II locomotive, basically. It's um, function over form, which basically means <laughs> looks and style and design, ah, they don't, they don't matter. They don't matter. Don't worry about those. All that matters is that the locomotive can do the job. That's the main objective. So that's why it looks so strange. And something else that's quite interesting about the Q1 is it's one of the most powerful 060s there is. It's got a really high rating, I think it's 5F. It's, the camera's struggling to focus, yeah, I think it is. I think it, well, it's struggling to focus on that, but I'm pretty sure that it's a 5F. So basically it's a very strong locomotive for just an 060. And it was also very lightweight because they couldn't be all fancy with the materials that they used. It was very lightweight, which meant that it could run over a huge area of the network and not worry about being too heavy for the tracks or anything. So basically, an incredible locomotive. You know, they, it hold freight duties and, and World War II supplies all over the south of England uh, during World War II. And that was essential because obviously World War II was <laughs> a pretty um, stressful time and lots and lots of locomotives were put to work including this one and it did a fantastic job of it it really did so it's really nice that hornby have made a model of it i don't think backman have made one i don't know if mainline did years ago or if anyone else has but it's supposed to be pretty good i'm really looking forward to it so we'll get the box open and see what's inside Okay, well, it's a really simple box. It's the typical Hornby design, nothing special. Oh, it's not even a split chassis, a split chassis. It's not even the, the split box, which I really quite like. It seems like it's a, it's quite an old design. Um, I still get people saying, we know how to open a box. Well, yeah, I, I should hope you do. I'm not showing you how to open a box, okay? I'm showing you what you get in the box. It's called an unboxing video. Look it up, they're quite popular. <laughs> so you get the typical Hornby artwork, which is quite nice. Um, oh, look at this, thank you, Connor. Small couplings in detail packet. Okay, I shall keep my eyes open for that. Um, Connor has very, very kindly said that I can hold on to this locomotive as long as I want. But Connor, if you do want it sending back to you after it, after it has visited Crew Works, please do let me know and it will be dispatched straight away. It's not a problem. Um, I only ever treat it as, as, as if it's on loan, basically. It's always going to be yours. 
So here we go. 060 Class Q1. Ah, oh, look at that. Locomotive and tender. Now that, again, interesting. Um, there was a Q1 by the LNER, but it was a tank locomotive. It didn't have a tender. So I just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> it's useless information, I know. Ah, ah, look at those wheels. 060. Wow. Yeah, and in real life, the, um, the cylinders were internal and the, uh, they were really steep as well. They were like up at the front of the locomotive. So basically you had the firebox here and then this is the boiler and the smoke box at the front and then all the steam would gather at the top and then be directed right down to the cylinders and then sh it would shoot out in a, at a really steep angle and basically drive the, the coupling rods and the connecting rods and turn the wheels. Incredible design. Really, really good, really iconic. Very clever guy, that, uh, Oliver. I think it was Oliver. Oliver Bullies? Sure it was. Right, so, again, just the usual stuff. Where to put the lubrication, how to replace the motor if you need to, but that hardly ever happens. Trust me, it's not something to worry about. Uh, oh, look, to remove the coal load. Now, that's quite nice. Hornby don't do that enough. So it's nice that you can take out the fake coal load and put a real one in. That's really good. Uh, now... Is it DCC? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's DCC ready, which means that you can put a chip in it somewhere. I don't know if it goes in the locomotive or the tender. We'll have to see in a moment. Um, what else do you get? Now, Connor said something about there being detail. Uh, there's a little bag of stuff down here. Yeah, I think, yes, yes, he must mean this. There we go. Wow, look at that. What's that? It's like a massive hook. What's... Th oh! Oh! Oh, wow! Look, there's a, a shovel. They're, they're, they're tools. That's really nice. Did Oliver, did... Is that what that was like? Lego? <laughs> um, they are, they're obviously not. They're um, the discs that go on the front of the locomotive, I suppose. But did all this stuff come with the locomotive? Because that's really good. I mean, there you've got the NEM couplings. Um, slim line as well, really nice and small, quite good. Hmm, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I was not expecting that, to be honest. I, I really wasn't. Oops. Right, so let's get the locomotive out then. Yeah, usual thing. Fins in the back. Lift it out. Now, let's get the locomotive out first. Okay. Wow, <laughs> look at that, what a locomotive, what a model. Are those buffers? They are sprung, the buffers are sprung. Fantastic. Does the smoke box open? Uh, no. No, I don't think it, no, no, I don't think it does. Ah, oh, that's a shame. That would have been so cool if it did, but yeah. Hey, there's, there's quite a bit of weight to this as well, you know. That's really quite heavy for such a little thing, because it's really not that big. I mean, it's probably only marginally bigger than a Jinty. I mean, I know it has a tender as well, and a Jinty doesn't have a tender, but the, the actual locomotive itself, it's not that big. Do you know, I'm going to fall into the group of people that love it. I, I just think it's so quirky. Look at it. And I, I love how you can see right underneath the boiler. What other locomotives have that feature? Well, the 9F, you know, the, the, the famous 9F for a start, that big beast. You can look right under the boiler in those, can't you? Look right, oh, hello. I do like that. That's really, really good. I love the design of these wheels. I really do. I think it's so fancy. They must have been the, um, you know, really stylish alloys of the day. <laughs> I think they're fantastic. And look at this linkage. Wow. I can't wait to see that in action. Now, there's quite a bit of detail on this buffer beam here. I don't know if Oliver... Um, Oliver? <laughs> I don't know if Connor has put that detail on or if it came like that, but it's really impressive. It's pretty good. What about cab detail, of course? Yes, there's cab detail. There's quite a bit of cab detail, actually. Look at that. That's not bad. 
that's not bad. It's better than nothing. And it's quite a big and open cab, so it's nice that they've included something so that we can see that. Now, what kind of connection does it have with the tender? There's definitely electrics, but I think it's probably just for the pickups. I don't think it's anything DCC. So I'm thinking the DCC chip does go in the actual locomotive. I mean, you can tell that the motor is somewhere around here. Now, I said it was DCC ready, and I can see something just underneath. So maybe the chip goes up here. I'm not sure. Oh, gosh, do you know, it's so nice. It's so smart. It really is. It's a beautiful model. Beautiful, folks. The numbers, yep, yeah, numbers on both sides. 33017. Uh, if we just wait for the camcorder to focus. Yep, yeah, it's a 5F. I'm not, I'm not too sure what the A stands for. I know what the, the F is obviously for freight, but um, I'm not too sure what the A stands for. I'm not. I should have to look that up. Oh, wow. I can't just notice all this pipe work. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Now, that is intricate. That is so nice. And, hey, look, there are definitely wires coming down there, running down here to the pickup. Um, the connection to the tender. This is a beautiful model, folks. It's very, very nice. And it's in excellent condition, Connor. It, it, it really is in excellent condition. You've looked after it very well. I hope it runs well. Um, let's just have a quick look at the tender. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Yeah, this is the tender. I just I just had to experiment with something um, off camera because you notice that it looks like there's little bits of detail here that are missing. There we go. This this part of the tender here, which is obviously shaped to go um, to go with the cab, it looks like it's missing two little bits, and it kind of is, but they're not missing. They are here. Oh, there we go. Just got one. These were what fell out of the box when I took the tender out. Now, it, nothing has snapped. Nothing is broken. Um, I've studied them and there's definitely nothing broken there. Everything's fine. It looks like they're either optional or they weren't put on properly or they haven't been set in place with glue or something. But it does look like that these little additional pieces of detail do go on the tender. Just, just there basically, like that. It looks like that's what's supposed to happen. Probably not that way around. Probably that way around or something. But it looks like they're supposed to go there. I'm not too sure. If you do know, please comment below and or tweet me or something. But I think that's where they're supposed to go. I shall look into it uh, at another time. But the, that coal load, it's really not that bad, folks. It's actually a pretty good coal load. I mean, I've seen much worse. That's pretty nice. It wouldn't take very much effort to make that look really realistic. But it does come out, which is really cool. Um, beautiful livery application, really, really smart. Look, you've got little footsteps just here, and they're metal as well, I think. Are they metal? Yes, yep. Um, look, a tiny little, like, <laughs> glass pane. Well, it's obviously plastic, but in real life, I, I, I um, imagine it would have been glass. And when I was looking at the, um, oh yeah, we've got sprung buffers, of course. I think I've mentioned that. But when I was looking through the instructions, I noticed that it said to take the body off. You actually have to... Yeah, there's a screw down there in the chimney. You have to get a screwdriver and put it down the chimney. <laughs> How quirky is that? This locomotive is just full of surprises. Um, now I, I know it's been out a while, but you can still get it. It's still a beautiful model. I, I just love it. Let's try to put the two together. I've not done that yet. There we go. That's what it looks like together. How nice is that? See, I, I, I think it's got such an interesting history, such an interesting story. You know, it worked so hard, it basically helped with the war effort, and it, it did such a good job. It's, it really is. It's something else, isn't it? It really is, unlike any other model I have. I just think it's... I love it! I think it's great! So, without further ado, let's get it on that track.
and see how well it runs. Okay, so here we are over at the test area of the conservatory layout. The world's most famous piece of skirting board. It's official. <laughs> so I'm just going to... Oh, look at that! It even just rolls on the track so nicely. Um, so I'm just going to set this up on the outer loop, as usual. Uh, the tender as well. Sorry about the shadows and everything. As I say, it's the middle of the night. Um, oh dear. I'm going to have to lift that one up just a tiny bit. There we go. There we go. Everything's on. Now, I've never tested this before. I genuinely don't know if it's going to work okay. If not, then obviously we'll have to send it off to Crew Works and get some maintenance done. But it should be okay, I hope. Direction selected. All right, let's give it some juice. Oh. Oh, there we go. And back this way, please. Hey, that's not bad. I mean, it's the middle of the night. It's really cold. This locomotive probably hasn't been ran for months. Um, I don't know how long uh, Connor had it without running it. But I know it's been here a couple of months and not ran yet. So, um, yes, let's get it running around the layout and get it warmed up. Just like a... Just like a sports car with a turbo or something, you've got to get it warmed up to get the best performance. So let's do that. Take it away, Q1. Okay, so I've actually given it quite a bit of speed. If we just have a look at the, um, the Gauge Master controller, here we go. You can see that I've, I've turned it up to about 45 because I mean, I, I usually wouldn't go this high. I would usually go to about 20 or 30. But I, it is really cold night. And I just want to get the locomotive warmed up just to see how well it runs. But already you can see that it's running really quite well considering it's not had any service or any run-in or anything. That's running beautifully. So I'm gonna go away, have a drink, let it warm up, and then we'll come back and test um, its performance capabilities. Okay, it's been about an hour later. Um, the locomotive has completely run in. It's really warm now, really warmed up. It's warmed up beautifully. I've been very impressed. I really have. The performance of this locomotive is stunning. Um, it's getting on a bit now, it's probably a few years old. I don't know how long Connor had it, but it's definitely um, not brand new anymore. But it is running like a dream. The only thing left to test is its haulage capability. And, well, in, in terms of keeping things efficient, because it is the middle of the night and I want to go to sleep, I am going to test its haulage capability with the infamous mega boxes. Okay, all the mega boxes are on the track, and I know this is not prototypical, okay? I know, but for the purposes of testing the strength of this locomotive, they will do. They're a very good test of the strength, trust me. So, this austerity bullied Q1 locomotive is famous in real life for just how strong it is. The tractive effort of this 060 locomotive is famous. <sighs> Let's see how well the model copes. And we're back. Yeah, <laughs> apologies for that. It's the uh, couplings on the mega boxes that sometimes can be a bit dodgy. However, the locomotive is not dodgy. The locomotive is a beast. Look at that, folks.
I know it looks odd, trust me. <laughs> but just look at the performance of that. It's as if the mega boxes weren't even there. So what do I think of the Q1? Well, people, I'm impressed, honestly. Um, performance, detail, strength, look at it. It's just incredible. And thank you, Connor, for sending it in.